Of all the parts of the writing process I try to give advice on, possibly the most nebulous and obtuse has to be how to plan it. Because there really is no right answer. There is no one way. All I can do is tell you how I and a few of my contemporaries have done it and go from there. I guess the first thing to get out of the way is to define what I mean by planning, because it can mean a few different things. Should you have an idea and a tertiary thought of who your character is before you sit down and write at the keyboard? Well, of course. Should you have an idea of what point of view you'll be writing in? Well, naturally. But these aren't things I consider planning. They're more at the inception stage of your novel. No, what I mean by planning is the stuff you do right before you sit down at the keyboard. When I say planning, what I mean is plotting. So there are a few approaches to plotting that I've become aware of. The first one, and I'll get this out of the way quick, is not to do it at all. To use an example, let's say that your novel is a journey, because in a way, it is. When some people take a road trip, they like to plan every rest stop and gas stop along the way meticulously. Other people like to just get in the car and go. Neither of these are wrong, and both will get you to where you need to go, but without a plan, you might get lost along the way. I'd leave that for experienced drivers, if you get my drift. So for those of us who are plotting, let's take a look at some of the different ways. When I wrote the 10 book Black Womb series, it was heavily plotted. It had to be, because they were actually written out of order, so I had to keep plot elements consistent. I'm not sure if there are pre-existing names on any of these plotting styles, but assuming there isn't, let's me call mine the linear style, because I took one of those cheap notebooks and did a rough draft of the basic story I was telling, where each page represented roughly a chapter. The whole story was there from beginning to end, including important bits of dialogue and whatnot. I find this really helps with pacing and cuts down on the time figuring out where to go next, because you can always refer back to your guide but it's still loose enough that you can add scenes when needed without messing it all up. My cohort, Ellen Curtis, utilizes a plotting style I call the... OCD style. She focuses strongly on the chronology of events, writing key plot elements on post-it notes and arranging them around the room she writes in. This allows her a quick visual reference and the ability to just move things around if need be. It works well for her, as I imagine it would for anyone who prefers a visual elements to memory. Eventually, though, I moved over to a method I'll call the connect the dots method, in which I know key scenes that need to happen and then just connect them. Keep in mind, this one I don't write down in a booklet, it's more of just a thought process. In his wonderful book, On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft, Stephen King compared the different tools a writer uses as different parts of a toolkit. Your story is compared to a dinosaur skeleton that your tools are helping you exhume. In this analogy, plot is like the jackhammer, very useful in the beginning, but as you get further in, using it can destroy the skeleton or story. I agree with this, your plot is important, but you have to know when to give up the ghost. If you find your characters driving the story in an alternate direction, that's a sign that your characters are growing and you should let them. Your plot is a ladder for your story, not a cage. Referring back to King, in his coda for the final Dark Tower book, King states that in his plot for the book, Jake Chambers did not die. It's something that just happened in the moment, and he went with it. That's important. Going with the flow of the story is very important. The bow that does not bend breaks, and all that jazz. Anyway, as I said, there's no right way. The important thing is writing. Keep writing.